Hey, yeah, folks. So, long time, no video, something like that. Um, I got a new desk. I'm still getting all my lighting set up, so sorry if things are a little bit worse than they usually are. Uh, I know my channel has never been known for particularly good lighting, but I'm, I'm working on it, I swear. Um, but anyway, this is a video that I didn't want to put off until I get the lighting fixed. Um, I want to try and get this done as soon as possible to get information out there because I happen to be one of the few people who has one of these bad boys before they come out. This is the new Easy Flash Omega Definitive Edition. Um, and there are some, uh, some, some cool new features that I'm not going to be checking out, but what I am going to be checking out is the power usage claims of this cart. Now, they were very unspecific. They said it uses less power than the Omega. What, what, what does that mean? Who knows? Uh, so I've got this and a whole slew of other carts that I don't want to move over just to move in just a second uh, that we're going to go ahead and compare it against. And we will see, does it actually use less power than an Omega? If so, how much? Let's, let's quantify that. Uh, so the testing console that I have set up is this sad excuse for a Game Boy Advance that I have been playing with. Oh my god, that's been in there the whole time. I haven't been looking for this or anything. <laughs> um, anyway, this is just a Game Boy Advance. Uh, I've done a few different mods to it just for the sake of testing. Um, volume is locked out, so this... This wheel does nothing. There's a bypass for it. The power switch is also bypassed. This has my prototype momentary power switch mod in it. Um, of course, this won't fit in an actual Game Boy Advance, but it should be more than enough, good enough for testing because it will completely eliminate any dirty power switches from the equation of which this console in particular was notorious for having issues. I have also installed a battery plug directly to the battery terminals, so we do not have to worry about any dirty dirty or intermittent connections, especially since this terminal is a wee bit corroded. Um, and I think that's it. It also has an IPS kit in it and Helder's Power Cleaner mod. Um, without an amplifier, this really doesn't do a whole lot, but it is here. This console in particular does need to be recapped, so the audio is very quiet, but it is what it is. I just wanted to go over the test console before uh, before we get into this, just to just present my testing method to you guys and uh, hopefully rule out anything I have overlooked. Uh, this kit in particular is one of the uh, generic unbrand quote-unquote one-chip kits. Uh, and it is an older version of it. And this screen in particular is broken, but unfortunately this ribbon is attached to the screen, so there's not a whole lot I can do about that easily without risking damage to the ribbon. But the screen works enough for testing. Anyway, I was sitting here at my desk just after getting everything wired up on this thing. I was trying to think, well, what's the best way to deal with the button inputs because I don't want to have to be reaching over with membranes and doing all that nonsense, when it finally occurred to me that I could just put the Jesus thing inside of a shell like they are supposed to be. So I think that is exactly what I will do. I'm going to be using this aftermarket IPS ready shell, which I do not recommend this one in particular in the slightest, but it's what I have handy, so it's what I'll use. I'm going to be missing an LED power window, but that is perfectly acceptable. This console is going to be missing lots of things. We'll pull out the blue tack. It's not exactly blue. Poster putty. And it should seat in there, mostly. 
There's some poster putty holding that speaker down too, so I had to gently move it around. And these wires I have wrapped around are getting caught. Sorry, this is normal. This is something I definitely should have done before the video, but I wanted to go over my testing setup beforehand, and it's easier to show off the whole motherboard than then assemble it. Okay. Hey, what do you know? Everything fits. We have buttons. The screen's mostly lined up. It's good enough. And I will be powering this with a bench power supply instead of batteries, hence the uh, battery plug. And the bench supply will give us a good number of good reading. So realistically, I think I'm going to oops, loosen these screws so I can slip these wires under that screw post. This way I can even put the back on. And use shoulder buttons. with me just gonna get these in real quick all right and unfortunately this shell does not already have a hole in the battery cover so we just have to leave the battery cover out for now but here we go the screen is in there all loosey-goosey because this particular shell does not have any way of affixing these screens without using permanent adhesive or the bracket that is sold separately um, And this shoulder button does not work, I don't think. But I, as long as it's not stuck down, I don't think we'll need it. All right, so the power supply is going to be the same one I usually use. I have made an adapter barrel plug to this battery connector. Let me just connect that up that way. Plug that in for power. I am set up to use, go ahead and focus, come on. Three volts with a current limit of 750 milliamps, but we won't, we won't need that. Uh, but just to verify that everything is working, it is on, as you can see the lights on the output, and ta-da. And we do have a green light in there. As you can see, my screen is broken, but like I said, good enough for this. Let's power this off, or actually before I power it off, if you look over here, you can see with the IPS kit, at the default brightness, whatever brightness it's at, um, it does have a memory on the brightness level. I have no idea what it's set to, but it's not gonna change. Uh, it's pulling 160, 153 to 195 milliamps. There we go, now it's focusing. So let us take a benchmark and play a perfectly regular 
official OEM Pokemon Emerald. Got to turn that on first, though. So every card I will be testing is flashed to the same ROM, except for this card, because this card can't be flashed. So every card is flashed to the ROM that I dumped off of this card, and the save that I dumped off of this card. So you can see in the overworld of this game, the stock cartridge does not pull that much more than no cartridge. So we're pulling anywhere from 199 to looks like about 222 milliamps. Uh, the reason for the variance, I don't know how well you can see this wave going up and down here. Let me kill this light. See this wave going up and down? Um, the power just kind of goes up and up and down. And because of the sample rate, you know, the number goes up and down. I almost wish it had a slower sample rate or just gave me a rolling average, but it is what it is. We'll just have to calculate the average ourselves. Looks to be about 210 milliamps. So that is the number to beat. I don't think any cart is gonna beat this number. Let's try, or before continuing, let me show you what all I have to try. So I have two relatively common aftermarket flash carts. Uh, this one from Inside Gadgets. It's a little bit of an older model, but uh, it's what I had on hand. Uh, I built this a while back during that Pal Park video. Uh, this should be fully compatible with the game, except for real-time clock. The newer versions of this cart do have real-time clock. I just don't have one yet. Uh, then we have the GBA Blaster from RetroStage.net. These just came out very recently. Um, this cart uses a flash save, the Inside Gadgets one, whereas this cart uses FRAM, so I did have to patch the game to run on this. But it does seem to be working, except for real-time clock, of course. Then we have a generic bootleg that I have um, modified with a extra big battery to hold the save. Uh, I did this like a year and a half ago and it seems to still be holding the save. Or at least I did just flash it, but the battery doesn't seem dead yet. I had to cut a hole in the cart just to get the Jesus battery to fit. But just generic bootleg, cheap game. Uh, then we have the brand new EverDrive GBX5 or GBA X5 Mini. Uh, just picked this up, if you can guess from the label, during the recent holiday sale. Um, I have used this, my, today is my first time using this. Um, this cart is allegedly the goal to beat for flash carts. Um, the 210 milliamp hour number that I measured on the original cart, this is going to take more power. But it should take less than my Easy Flash Omega, but it, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, next up, we have my Easy Flash Omega. I got this right when they came out. I have modified this cart with my very own LED access indicator, SD access indicator LED. Um, so I won't, I won't be testing with this cart in particular. I do actually have a second Easy Flash Omega here just in case my modifications affected the power usage of this cart in particular. We will use a regular cart. I really don't think they did. Well, on that note, we'll just test both carts then uh, and find out for sure. And then last up, we have the Easy Flash Omega Definitive Edition. So I'm actually going to start with the Definitive Edition cart here um, just because I feel like that's probably what most of you are here to find out, so no sense making you sit through a 40-minute video when the answer you seek is only 15 minutes in. Uh, so, without further ado, let's try it out. Let's turn that on. Yeah. 
and uh, yeah you can see I was already playing with it start that up exact same ROM exact same save even in the overworld it's pulling anywhere from 235 to 275 uh, but it seems to linger around two in the 270s more than it drops down so I guess we'll call it about 270 average now of course this is going to these are all relative numbers. I don't have a way of measuring just the cart itself. Uh, so I have to measure the whole system. The reason I'm measuring with a backlight kit is because I feel like that would be most indicative or the best representation of what most people would be using. And the reason I'm using Pokemon Emerald is because, well, it's one of the most popular games for this console. So why not test with it? So anyway, we are using a not insignificant amount of power just make sure to get that in frame a little bit so it's using what about 60 milliamps more on average let's try the everdrive this thing's getting all beaten up It should be the last ROM I played. Yeah. And so the EverDrive is pulling. Looks like 231 to 251. 252. Yeah, not bad. Wish this thing had a bigger, well, the screen's already plenty big. I wish the number I cared about was bigger on the screen. But uh, there you go. So still not quite as efficient as the uh, EverDrive. But pretty darn close in the grand scheme of things. And to further contextualize that, here is the original Easy Flash Omega. This is the one that I did the LED mod on. So yeah, as you can see, this thing sucks back quite a bit more power. Two seventy-five to I thought I saw three fifteen. Well, there's three thirteen. There's three fifteen. Three eighteen. So two seventy-five to three eighteen is about two ninety-five average. So. Yeah, they are definitely correct that this uses less power than the uh, previous iteration here. Um, but it doesn't use quite as little power as the EverDrive. Now, again, this will depend significantly on the game you're playing. Uh, any other mods you have in your console, uh, especially backlight and what brightness level you're using your backlight on. But... This is why when you're playing games off of your flash cart, you get worse battery life than if you were just playing games off of your original carts. All right. And just for funsies, let's try the other one, the other easy flash. Let's rule out the LED 
I really don't think it should make any difference whatsoever, but just in case it does. Here's another Easy Flash Omega that is perfectly unmodified. This is the one that I did the battery replacement on a little while back. I'm using the exact same SD card, so exact same ROM once again. Ooh, that's another thing to check. I wonder if the SD card will make a difference. It probably does, but I don't I don't know if that's something I can measure. You know, if that'll be something margin of error or what. So I saw 269 and peaks of 306. Oh, it was 265. 309. So 265 to 309, that's going to be about 280. So I guess maybe, I guess that LED mod uses about 15 milliamps worth of power. Neat. Anyway, I will go back through this video and uh, take down this data and throw it. I'll, I'll put it all in a spreadsheet that I'll link in the description. So you don't have to just keep pausing and writing this stuff down or try and remember it because I sure as hell am not going to be able to remember it. Uh, yeah, neat stuff. 307. Cool. Three more cards. Let's try everyone's ever favorite bootleg. Now, these bootleg carts appeal to people all over because of the price. You can get the bootleg cart for five US dollars, all right? But let me say they are that cheap for a reason. This one in particular, I do have modified, and it does happen to be working for me, but they very rarely do. Uh, yeah, so this game does not have the, the Elite Four beaten on it. Um, that's why this is working. Most bootlegs do not work past the Elite Four. The save just corrupts. So that's, that's why I'm able to get away with this, because I don't have the Elite Four beaten unless I am totally mistaken because I can't actually read any of this, in which case I apologize, please correct me in the comments. Um, but either way, I still did have to modify this cart quite significantly just to get this game on it. What's interesting though, is the power usage. That is much less than I would have expected. Now the story is probably different for Game Boy Color bootlegs, so, I suppose we can check that out afterwards. I've already got the setup for it. Um, let's see what we're at. Saw 218 peak, 222 peak, 193 valley. So what about 208, 210 average, which is just about on par with one of these things. So that totally blew my mind. I would have expected this to be about the power usage of one of these things. Neat. Alright, that's enough of that. Next up we have the Inside Gadgets Flash Save Flash Cart, which uses a 1 megabit flash chip for the saves. And then a 32 megabyte EEPROM flash something. I don't know what it's called. 32 megabytes for ROM storage though. Cool thing about this cart in particular is that it does work on PAL Park if you have the DS games. All right, so power usage is interesting. I would have expected this to be less efficient than this. That is so very interesting. So I saw it go down to 193, but I haven't seen anywhere near that. And peaks of 236, 237. Oh, there's a 194 again. So 
about 220 average. So a little bit more than this and a little bit more than that, unfortunately. And last up is our Retro Stage GB Blaster or GBA Blaster. Ignore the notes on all these cases. I, I've been cleaning and refurbishing some stuff and borrowing cases for other carts. And I just never happened to take off all the notes. Oh no, it doesn't have my save. Well, that makes it kind of hard to test, doesn't it? So they have to take the values of this cart with a grain of salt. 190 to 220. We'll at least get into the overworld. Two twenty seven. That changed very little. Interesting when it was loading, how that spiked up to 241. I'm going to leave it where it's sitting, though, just to try and give it the best shot. Um, I'm seeing 196 to 227, so an average of about 215. Not bad. Uh, still surprising. Um... I didn't expect these results at all. I think I just saw a 246. I'm... Yeah, that is so weird. Okay, so let's... Let's, let's review, or at least try to. You'll have to bear with me if I, uh, if I get this a little bit wrong. Double check the spreadsheet that I will link in the description. Uh, but as far as power usage goes, left is the least, right is the most. Least, your original cart, most, Easy Flash Omega. Next up, we have Definitive Edition, then the EverDrive, Then I believe we had Inside Gadgets cart. And retro Stage. And then the bootleg, just like that. I'll have to double check my notes there, or my uh, recording, but I will say that's not it. I expected these two. The rest of this surprised me though. Uh, Anyway, I hope that was interesting content. Bear with me just a few minutes. I'm going to reset and prepare because we are going to do the exact same test, but with uh, some Game Boy Color flash cards. I'll be back in just a moment. I gotta get a bootleg flashed. All right, I think I've got everything set up. So the test Hardware is going to be identical. The difference is we are going to be testing with Game Boy Color games instead of Game Boy Advance games because... Oh no, I'm dropping things. Uh, because you can't typically run Game Boy Color games on Game Boy Advance hardware. At least not without emulation. Um, so the test setup we have today, for a baseline we have a regular Pokemon Gold cart. Um, I will double check that against Pokemon Silver. No, I won't because I have no idea where that went. 
starting to get mad until I remembered that it was inserted into my Game Boy. The uh, retro modding one that I just did. Anyway, so these two will be our baseline. I'm going to test both because this cart is refurbished, but this cart is original. They should be the same, but we'll double check that. Next, we will test a generic bootleg. One of these new retro stage, retro blaster carts. Um, I would love to test out my inside gadgets flash cart as well, but unfortunately I have yet to assemble it. So, sorry, maybe next time, Alex. Um, and then I have the two most common flash carts, the Easy Flash Junior and then the EverDrive GBX7. I did reshell my GBX7 because, I don't know, I thought this was cooler. But trust me, it is a legit OEM GBX7. Um, and I have a hole cut for the LED filled with epoxy and then a hole for the SD card. So anyway, let's get it done. Oh, and one more cart. Sorry, a um, flash cart built out of an OEM cart. Let's see, here is this thing again. Go ahead and turn it on. And we will start with the baseline. So I wouldn't be surprised if this actually pulls more power than a Game Boy Advance game. Just Game Boy Color in general. But it looks like it's actually about the same. Um, I see 193 on the low. And was that 226 on the high? Yeah, it was 227. 193 to 227, so about 210 average, I guess. And this is for an OEM cart. Uh, but again, this is the one that I refurbished during that stream relatively recently. Uh, it had severe water damage. Um, it should be fine, but we'll double check. Poster putty came off. All right, Pokemon Silver in the exact same situation is pulling the exact same amount of current. Though I did see it go down all the way to 180. But other than that one instance of 180, it seems to be sticking to 193 to about 227, which puts it the exact same as this cart. All right. So next up, we have a flash cart which is flashed with Pokemon Gold and the same save that I have on every other cart. Kind of a waste of a flash cart, but it is what it is. And unsurprisingly also pulls the exact same amount of power. That's one of the nice things about these custom flash cards. I see highs of 231, lows of 185. So it seems to oscillate a bit more, but on average it's the same. Well, that was 180.
All right, so this is where I expect to run into difficulty with bootlegs because the components used inside this cart are 3.3 volt components running on the 5 volt Game Boy Color system, whereas bootlegs like this that use, or excuse me, flash carts like this that use 3.3 volt components have these level shift level shifters built in. But this has no level shifters. So let's try it out. This also does not have the same save as the rest of them because I just don't have the capabilities of getting this cart to hold a battery powered save, especially that save in particular, unfortunately. So again, it is a different location, which could affect things. I don't really think it will. Um, you know how it is, different things loaded into system memory could induce different loads on the system. Plus there's different music playing. It's worth considering, but I don't think it should make that big of a difference. So let's take a look at the power. One eighty three on the low end, two twenty two on the high end. Oh, that's absolutely fascinating. Someone with a better test setup would be able to corroborate this, but if what I'm seeing is true, this is actually more power efficient than an OEM cart, which kind of blows my mind. It's going down to 175. That's very interesting. Again, that totally subverted my expectations. the hell? Stop coming unstuck. Alright, let's try retro stage cart. This one does have my save on it. Of course, this one does not support real-time clock functions. Uh, neither did the bootleg. These three carts do. The inside gadgets cart that I have not built yet, I think it does. I'm not 100% sure which one I have, actually. Um, some of them do, some of them don't. Oh, I just remembered another flash card I can test. I'll have to go grab it in a moment. Um, let's take a look at the power usage. So this seems to be about the same as the rest. Uh, peaks 235, valley 196. That's eh, so a little bit higher. I guess about 218, 220 average. A little bit higher, not much. Let's try the easy flash next. And this is what I'm expecting to be the heaviest card as far as power usage goes, especially when loading. But once it's in game, it should be a little bit better. I still expect it to be worse than the rest though. Oh yeah, definitely. Two, 235 low, 270 high. Two twenty five low. Yeah, 
Yeah. Okay, so about 250 average. So, so far the highest. But let's see if the EverDrive beats it. Save's not exactly where I thought it was. Where am I? I am one town over. I'm glad I put buttons in this Game Boy. Not that I expect this should make a difference. Oops, going the wrong way. Just try and be as consistent as possible. All right. So, I saw a low of 198, a high of 235. How very interesting. Oh, 243 high. All right. So, average about, what did I say, 190, oh, I just saw 196. Uh, so what, about 220, give or take? I'll put better values in the spreadsheet. I'll use the power of math to calculate averages. So that was very interesting. I, th these are not the results that I was expecting. Yes, hello. So again, let's do a lineup here. Shoot, I already forgot. I think it's like this though. This was the lowest and by like five milliamps more, we have these three. And then by like 10 milliamps more, these two. And then by 20 milliamps more, that one. That's so bizarre. Oh, you know what? Let's do one more quick thing. I'm going to grab the Inside Gadgets flash cart that I do actually have and just remembered. I'll be right back. All right, one last quick test. Uh, totally forgot I had this because it's been put away on account of me not actually using it. Uh, but what this is, this is a flash cart from Inside Gadgets. I don't remember the specifics on this, but if I recall correctly, this is one of the first flash carts that he started selling. Um, and I just thought it was the freaking bee's knees at the time, so I had to buy one. Uh, and of course, this was well before I started making my own, before I had, um, before these even were on the market, before I had one of these, before I had one of these, so on and so forth. Anyway, it does not support real-time clock. Alex does make game, uh, flash carts that do. This is not one of them. Um... Let's uh, let's try it out. This is an MBC five only cart, and it has SRAM. It doesn't even have FRAM, so it does still take a battery for saves. But it it, it does not use any OEM cartridge ports what parts whatsoever. Unfortunately, that means it's pretty thirsty as far as power goes. What was that? 260 Valley. Two nine three oh five peak. Uh, 
Uh, so I'll go down to 247. So, yeah. It's not, not quite how I thought that would turn out. That, I'm glad I did this test. I, I've learned quite a few things today. I hope you guys have as well. Anyway, again, I will put a uh, spreadsheet in the description with some values that I measured for all of this stuff, um, both for Game Boy Advanced and for original Game Boy here. Um, I will also put a link to where you can get yourself one of these fancy new Easy Flash Omega Definitive Editions, if that's what you want. Or, you know, if you just want a regular Easy Flash Omega, though I don't think they have the blue shells, and that sticker is my own custom, so I think that's a better, better example. I'll go ahead and throw a link up for one of these as well. Um, you know what? Screw it. I'll, th I'll throw... There's going to be lots of links. There's lots of flash carts. <laughs> there, there should be, uh, what, like seven links in the description? Something like that? Eight links. Nine links. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, it looks about right. All of these flashed with a GBX cart reader. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, um, please take a look at that spreadsheet first. If you still have questions, hit me up in the comments. Um, as far as this thing goes, I do need to make one quick addendum that I completely forgot about until now. This Easy Flash is not running the retail firmware. This is a pre-release unit running pre-release firmware. The retail firmware is supposed to be releasing today. I will uh, update this one as soon as that releases and I will test it again. And if I come up with any extra numbers, I will add it to the spreadsheet. And if that firmware releases before I even start uploading this video, which is probably not likely, I will add it straight to the video, but not necessarily. I don't think that the firmware update should make a difference as far as power usage goes, but I had many assumptions going into this, into this video and not all of them are right. So I will double check it as soon as I can, but I will be uploading the video first. So anyway, thanks for watching. Again, any questions, please check out that spreadsheet. Please read the description. There's always good information in there. There's also going to be a ton of links, non-affiliate links, of course. Um, otherwise, that's, that's all I got for you guys, man. Hit me up in the comments if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic 2021.